boys, welcome to Cosplay Stitch and Seam. This is our special SakuraCon 2022 episode. Yes, SakuraCon did happen a little while ago, but we were on hiatus. My name is David, and throughout this episode, we got to talk to some really fantastic people at SakuraCon. Uh, if you happen to know these people, feel free to give them a shout out on our Discord or our Facebook page. We would love to see them join the community if they aren't already a part of it. We wanted to... I, listen, you guys, I, I, I have... I'm doing this by myself. I, I usually have Mercedes. I usually have Panon with me. So I feel like I have all of this like free reign and ultimate power, right? Definitely a bad idea. However, it's not terrible. It's not the end of the world. But uh, let me just go through our normal business and then you guys can get over to the SakuraCon part of the interviews and whatnot um, and what we thought of it as well. So make sure that you are supporting the show in any way that you can. That's joining our Facebook community, joining our Discord. The links can be found on our Facebook or our new website, CosplaySitchAndSeam.com. There's a little uh, little social media button down there for Discord. Uh, join us whenever you like or our Facebook group, What? Ever works best for you. And while you're on the internet, if you want to help continue supporting the show, you can share the podcast with a friend, leave a rating or review on Apple Podcasts, on Podchaser, Spotify now lets you leave those reviews. And we have a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash cosplay stitch. For $3 a month, you get a shout out on the show every single month. And for $5 a month, you can join our cosplay chronicles. It's very quiet without Panon and Mercedes doing the echo effect. So just pretend. <laughs> Um, we also have a coffee KOFI cosplay stitch. We do want to thank K. That's all that they have is just the letter K, uh, for a fantastic donation. Thank you so much. That helps us pay for overhead fees. It helps pay for, uh, the hosting of all the online stuff that we do. So it's no small donation that like any donation is, is really great. So something that was notable like this Kay, thank you so much. Uh, Mercedes, Panon, and I were talking about it just last night at the time of this recording, and uh, we're just amazed. Thank you so much. So, um, go ahead, do all of the normal social things. Fox Beauty Cosmetics, F-O-X-X. Again, go to cosplaystitchandseam.com, and there's a section in our About Us where you can go to Fox Beauty Cosmetics website. Um, one-stop shop kind of thing. Go check out their fantastic makeup. I wear it all the dang time. It's so good. Uh, all right. I'll, I'll stop delaying the, the the great episode that, that's, that's ahead of you guys. SakuraCon 2022. Thanks so much, you guys. Thanks for being awesome. Have a great day. Bye. Hi, this is David at SakuraCon with Cosplay Stitch and Seam, and I am here with two amazing cosplayers. Uh, what are your cosplay names or names or whatever? Uh, just Cause Cosplay. Uh, I also go by The Darkened Elf, and I'm Kelsey. Um, I just go by my name. My name is Jay. Uh, I came up with the name Just Cause. We were spitballing ideas, so there we go. Um, okay, and yeah. what are you guys cosplaying as today? Um, I am the art book Fruits Maids version of Sailor Moon. I love that. That's so good. And uh, you are? I am the main character, uh, cosplaying the main character, Soma, uh, from the show... Uh, manga food wars food wars it's one of my personal favorites and you showed me you had some peanut butter covered uh oh, tentacles yeah. yes i do um what what were these made out of so the base tentacles uh were actually bought uh off of amazon okay um and the peanut butter is a two-part mold mixture mm -hmm. uh, i believe it is mold star 30 but i might be mistaken it might be mold star 20 uh, mixed in with some uh, UVO dye, uh -huh. uh, it smells weird. It's still a little sticky, and <laughs> that's just right. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. Um, have you guys gone to SakuraCon before? This is my 20th year at SakuraCon. 20th year? Yeah, wow. my first convention was SakuraCon 2002. Wow. What this about you, This year is my uh, 15th, I think we decided. Uh -huh. uh, I believe my first convention... Soccer Con and my first anime convention in general mm -hmm. was 2007. So wow. Con. Okay. So you guys have been doing the con thing uh, for a while. Have you guys been cosplaying that entire time or? Yes. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. So can I ask, like, who inspires you for like your cosplays? Like, is is it a character? Is it another cosplayer? What what inspires that like want to cosplay? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Everything. Um, you know, I tend to pick characters that I like. 
or you know characters that I think have an interesting design that I think I could do something with not necessarily even good characters mm -hmm. you know I've cosplayed villains before and that's just because it's fun I can do aesthetic things yeah um, but I can also you know I can look at other cosplayers and see things that they've done that I like yeah, and uh, you know yeah, things that I want to do similarly so I saw a similar group of fruits maids use the glitter ribbon uh -huh. and I thought that's perfect I can get glitter ribbon I love it and it also matches the um the newer art that came out with the uh food truck love it yeah I love it so much what about you Jay um oh. honestly uh I, I just got so thrown cool. into this world when we started <laughs> dating right um but it's so much fun, and I really enjoy the process of making a cosplay mm -hmm. and um, seeing, like, kind of the joy that it brings others when, you know, you're walking around and somebody recognizes you and they congratulate you. Wow, you did such a great job. I yeah. love that. Like, that's really fulfilling. And, um, and so, yeah, that's, like, that's, that's, I get a lot out of it from that's that. That's so great to hear. Um, I, I can't believe like I got to see both of you and, and like the great work that you guys are doing. Uh, where can people find you if you would like, want to plug your social media? Facebook, it's going to be Just Cause Cosplay, all one word. Instagram is going to be The Darkened Elf. TikTok is also going to be The Darkened Elf. Uh, Twitter, I believe, is Just Cause Cosplay, but don't quote me on that. I'm very sleepy. <laughs> but the Instagram also has a link tree to all of these different accounts. Heck yes. Awesome. All right. Any, any final thoughts? Any, any, anything else? Uh, you know, welcome back to SakuraCon. You know, <laughs> here we are. Uh, I think that, you know, it's just fun to be here again. It is. Yeah. It's, it's, this is my first time being here, and oh, I, am, I am overwhelmed. It is too good. It is, yeah. it is really great. It honestly well, is. thank you so much, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, still at SakuraCon, and I am here with... Uh, Alex Baker. And you are running this shop, or or Halcon? Or Halcon Armory, yes. So you've got all of these prop guns. Some of them have LEDs, some of them are just absolutely gorgeous. I, how, how are these made? What are, what are, what's the process here? Um, I go to thrift stores, and uh, I uh, buy bust up toys and guns, and I hack them to pieces and reconstruct them. These are... These are kit bashed? Yeah, pretty much kit bash. I upcycle. I, I cast some of my own parts in resin, but yeah, they're largely just upcycled parts. How, uh, what, what, what's the time process of like a new gun? It depends. The larger rifles usually take a little while, but like a handful of the smaller guns I can usually do a bunch of them in maybe a weekend other than paint, obviously. That takes a little bit longer, but the base construction, yeah, I'd say a weekend. And you, you were saying that you make all these to be con safe, correct? Yes, they're all con safe. Nothing fires, uh, orange tips, but because but they all have some kind of uh, little gag or interactivity as lights or trigger pull, slide pull. Some of the shotguns break open and shells fly out. Ah, oh, that is so cool. So there's so, so, so it's so. a mixture of kit bashing, resin, glue and stuff together. Uh, yeah, there's no one thing I do. I'm, <laughs> it's just a bunch of things. You just follow the dopamine. Yeah, whatever works. Sometimes all you need is hot glue. Sometimes you need to rivet stuff together. Yeah, I was I was noticing like on your um, on your your paint technique, you've got fantastic weathering. You've got like different highlights of colors that really make it come to life. That this looks like a single solid piece that I was buying for a character. Yeah. Uh, what what was the goal behind like doing something like this? Was there like a, a, a hot character? Cheaper than therapy. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. You no, know, this is just a hobby. It keeps you know. It, it's you know. If I'm ever feeling down or crappy, sometimes just sitting down in my shop and just tinkering away. It just makes me feel better. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and it's also for cosplay too. Like you know, some of this this whole back wall are some of my personal collection for outfits and various cosplays. Post apocalyptic cyberpunk. I got the transformer helmet down here. Do you do custom work or on occasion when I have time? It's you know this isn't my day job, obviously. Do you want it to be your day job? I mean, of course, but of course. it's it's never. <laughs> but unfortunately, it's a niche market, so I gotta. Yeah. Do, I'm a custodian by trade, so. Yeah, I get you. I get you. But it gives you the opportunity to like, ooh, that might be a good part here and there. Yeah, exactly. It's basically I go there. I'm like, ooh, I could do something with that, and sometimes use the damnedest things to make them cool stuff. So these are are really amazing and masterfully done. Where can people like find your social media presence? Uh, you can find me at Aura Halcon Armory on um, 
Etsy, same for Instagram. Those are my major ones. I do have a Facebook too, but I don't usually post stuff there as much. So Instagram and yeah, Etsy. Awesome. Thank you so much. So I'm still at SoccerCon and I'm here with... Catherine Tong. Catherine Tone, and you were in the competition today. Yeah. What are you dressed as? I am a Hydro Abyss Mage from Genshin Impact. It is absolutely stunning, the work that you have put in here. Can you tell me a little bit about the costume? Thank you so much. Well, the costume, I really uh, focused on capturing the sheer poofiness of the Abyss Mage <laughs> because that's very, that's really critical to, uh-huh. like, just the Abyss Mageness. So I started out with a crinoline to get that, like, poofness and then hiked it up to the shoulders and then just did a lot of deep uh, what do you call them iron on fabric as well as vinyl to get the pattern on wow for the fur since it, i could not find fur that was abyss mage coloration i dyed it that was a fun experiment with you dyed this this is amazing <sighs> it's a bubbling pot of dye <laughs> like just dropping the fur in it was an experience, yeah. Yeah, totally. And the staff was Eva Foam, Warbla, and a lot of soldering and cursing. Uh, I imagine the, the later uh, of all of that, definitely. There's LEDs in it and everything. That is amazing. Thank you so much. Wow. How, how many hours did, did this take? Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> so I don't think I would have been able to complete this cosplay if I wasn't currently unemployed. So that should tell you something. All right. Fair enough. So, unemployment is great. <laughs> can I ask you, like, what inspires you? What motivates you to do, uh, like, a large cosplay like this? Well, what motivated me to do this is that there was an anniversary event. Um, MiHoYo was hosting an anniversary event for Genshin where there was a cosplay section. And I was like, you know what? I think that I want to finally make a cosplay since all these years I've been like, oh, it'd be so great to cosplay, but now I actually have the time. Mm-hmm. And then so, well, everyone is cosplaying the Genshin characters. There's amazing renditions of all the characters out there. Yeah. So why not cosplay as one of the most annoying enemies to run into in the game? <laughs> so if I meet a Genshin cosplayer in a con, I can go like, <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll be like, ah! So that's, that's inspiration. That's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. How do you keep yourself motivated? Like you had different experiments that you said. You had trial and error, I only imagine, with the vinyl pressing and the cursing with the, the, <laughs> with the staff. Yes. What keeps you motivated to Deadline. keep going? Deadlines. Deadlines. Yes. I love it. I love it Deadline so much. Deadline for the, um, the MiHoYo anniversary event competition and the deadline for the Sakura Con. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That's awesome. I, well, I won't take up any more of your time. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Where can people find this, uh, your social media or anything along those lines if you want to plug it? Oh, boy. Uh, so I don't use social media, but I can be found on Reddit. Um, username R-H-Y-S-I-U-M. Rizium. Awesome. Thank you so much. And, and now I'm here with... Beesifer. Beesifer? Yeah. And what are you dressed as today? Yugi Moto from Yugi Mo- With this fantastic wig going on. Um, now, you <laughs> were telling me about it's a, like, not a standard wig. Tell me more. I made it myself. It's got a fishnet wig cap, and I used a bunch of yarn, cut into strands, unraveled it, straightened it, and sewed it on in different layers. And you have, like, cones to hold shape and whatnot? Yeah, I used foam cones to shape the spikes. This is absolutely (laughs) amazing. Can I ask how long it took? Uh, because I worked on it on and off about a month-ish. Uh-huh. So. Wow. Yeah, and I'd spend hours at a time usually at it. I can only imagine. This is absolutely amazing. Thanks. Um, (laughs) what motivates you to, like, do a project like this? I really love this character, and I really wanted to cosplay him, Uh and I was like, I need a wig, (laughs) and I was like, it's expensive to buy one, so I was like, I can make it myself. (laughs) Would you say, like, that's been a good reaction so far while you're at SoccerCon? Yes, I've had so many people ask for pictures and compliment the way like oh my. so much fun. Which is, uh, in all due respect, the perfect response of like, I need pictures of this. This is fantastic. <laughs> yes. um, what else, like, 
what what else do you tr want to try and like accomplish? Because you've got like this great idea right here. Mm -hmm. Is there like other cosplays that you're thinking of how to do differently or something along those lines? Yeah, there's a few that I kind of have ideas jotted down. Just like this, I love it. Uh -huh. But I also have ideas like I could make it better. <laughs> Heck yeah, I love that. So I love yeah. that so much. Well, I won't take up much more of your time. Thank you so much for your time. Is yeah, there a social course. media that you would like to plug? No, it's okay. Uh, all right, cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, David's still at SoccerCon, and I'm here with... Kitty. Kitty, and Kitty, you are running a booth here with some of the most adorable plushies <laughs> and stuffed animals I have ever seen. Um, what, uh, what all are you selling here at this booth? Oh, my goodness. Um, plushies, charms, stickers, skirts, um, all of it handmade, pins... <laughs> Stickers. Yeah. I said stickers. What drew me to your your uh, your booth was these little stuffed bunny and uh, kitty with like the hoodie and Spider Man and Doctor Strange logo. These are absolutely adorable. And I see. And the the second thing that drew me in is you have your fur babies uh, as part of your crafting ritual. Let's call it. Yeah. Yes. Because a lot of people are allergic to cats, and cat hair gets into everything. everything. You can be. You could sew in a hermetically sealed room. Uh huh. And it's still going to get cat hair in it. It doesn't matter. So I, I have, it's it's for the people who are insanely allergic. I, I would rather not too much sell. Experience. Yeah, I would rather not sell a plushie to somebody than have them have a reaction to it. That's yeah. I love that. I love that so much. Yeah. So on cosplay stitch and seam, uh -huh. uh, we talk about like what motivates somebody. And you are you have all of these great products. What <laughs> motivates you to like do so much here? ADHD. <laughs> Do not call me out like this on my own show. It's the truth. I can't focus on one thing for too long. Uh huh. So I have to, I have to have multiple projects going at a time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which does get overwhelming and does affect the motivation. But it has to be fun. It has to be something I enjoy, and it has to be super stinking cute. Uh, <laughs> I can definitely say it's super freaking cute on my end. Like these are adorable. I'm planning on buying one of the skirts for myself soon. Yes, please. Um, but um, when you when you have all of this set uh, set aside and ready to go, like, do you sit back and just kind of go like, I have this empire, and like, I don't know what to do with it. Does it ever get overwhelming? No. No. Only when I'm like, holy sh crap! Sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear. You're good. You're good. <laughs> holy crap! I have a con coming up. I don't have enough stuff. Uh -huh. Sleep does not exist for this next two weeks. Sure, sure. <laughs> Do you do the con cycle a lot, or are you just, like, local here in, in Washington? I'm actually from Portland, so I, okay. I, because I have to drive everywhere because of my stock, uh -huh. there's no way I can freight and, and airfare costs. It's just cheaper for me to drive at this point in time, because uh -huh. um, sometimes I camp in my vehicle to save, uh -huh. again, to save on costs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, truck stop showers are a thing, and they're amazing, and I'm not above paying for a truck stop shower. <laughs> Heck yeah. Uh, uh, no one's going to consider that a downside at yeah. all. Like, it's not, it's not glamorous, but it no, is what it is. It, it is. It, it, it's, the reality, it's the reality of it. Yeah. And this is my full-time job. This is what I do. My husband's full-time job does, does um, support us a lot as well, uh -huh. and my income is extra. Um, so, yeah, and... But you get joy out of it. Oh, so much. I will not go back. To, I've told my husband I will not go back to another 9 to 5. I, no there one, is, yeah. There is no way I will work for somebody else. I, I love that. I love that. Like, you're I, living yeah. the dream, right? I. It's I, a struggle, but yes. Yes, very <laughs> much so. <laughs> so, um, oftentimes we like to talk about, like, a, a, a horror story, a cosplay horror story. Usually um, the seam split uh, while you're on stage or anything along the lines. Do you have a sewing or plush making horror story that you would love to share? Oh my goodness. Um, I guess my, my only real horror story is the con crunch is yeah. the, the stress of, am I going to have enough? Am I going to get this done in time? You know, um, sitting at the convention and working and stitching and you know, your fingers are numb and you're sitting here trying to hand stitch stuff closed so that you can have enough product because you're so stressed about because you never know what people are going to buy yeah what was popular at your show two weeks ago may not be popular at your current show so i think that's probably like the closest thing to a horror story is just <laughs> fair enough not knowing what to what to make yeah. or something like you know 
like what I ha found this weekend that I missed is uh, one of the stitches had popped on one of my bats. Oh no! So I mean, it's an easy fix. Yeah. But thankfully, the person saw it before somebody purchased it, so I can now fix it. So yeah. that's, other than that, that's all I can really think of. <laughs> no, it's a good one. It's a good one. Well, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, Do you have a social you. media you would like to plug? Sort of. I'm just. I'm old, so <laughs> social media is hard. Sure. But um, at Geeky Catacorn, and I'm pretty much the only thing that pops up. Perfect, perfect. These are absolutely lovely. Thank you so much for your time. Hi, guys. It's the last day of the con. On. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pennant. <laughs> hey, that's my line. Oh, I didn't say I was David. Oh, okay, fair enough. Uh, how how was your SakuraCon experience, Panon? It was pretty wonderful. Um, our contest was full of a lot of incredibly skilled people. Um, it made judging, of course, really difficult. Um, I honestly don't think I have judged a craftsmanship portion of a competition that has been that close. Mm -hmm. We just had such a variety of talent in so many different fields um as far as like armor and sewing and props and wigs and just like complex works and groups with different levels of skill it was it was really an amazing show mm -hmm. no it was it was absolutely top notch i got to sit down with livy who is one of our patrons uh you got to come along with us on this trip and what did you think of the competition it was wonderful I had a really great time. This is my second con ever, and the cosplay contest was absolutely incredible. Like, someone came out in a big suit of armor, and it blew my mind. And then someone came out with a lot of lights, and it blew my mind. And then, like, there was a spinning staff, that Final Fantasy fourteen thing, it blew my mind. It was a really, really fun weekend. It's amazing he can form words with how much his mind has been blown lately. Yeah, <laughs> the alcohol has something to do with it too. Ah, <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. I, mean, I feel I feel uh, like the guests were really sweet too. Like they had a lot of the voice actors just out in the vendor hall that you could say oh hi gosh. to and meet with. Um, and we had a really fun experience with that. Um, we did some of the tabletop gaming. Had a really fun game this afternoon. We just went over to sit down and play a little uh, Commander and had a Magic the Gathering. Yeah, Magic. Um, and just had someone walk up and say, Hey, can I join your table? I want to play commander. And, you know, we were like, yeah, sure. And ended up being just a delightful and wholesome game. And I have never had that experience and it was really cool. Yeah. As someone that has played a lot of magic with a lot of randos, I would say that like the kind of average experience is usually like neutral bordering on negative. And it was a very positive experience. Mm. What, uh. Yeah, would do again was great. Nice job, Sakura. Like, that guy was also, like, just an absolute charm because mm. he would just, like, see you two go at it for, like, a round or something. And he goes, I'm going to help Hannon <laughs> because I want to see this relationship fall apart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was pretty amazing. Yeah, that was very good fun. <laughs> And then the dealer hall was, like, surprisingly full of, as David told me, the kids are saying, drip. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Why do you make me sound <laughs> old? No, I make me sound old because uh, you had to tell me the hip kids I did. I did have to tell um, you that, yes. But there was a lot of really cool, like, uh, T-shirts and not just T-shirts, but, like, jackets and dresses and skirts and accessories and just like all kinds of stuff I wanted to put on my body. Like all this great fashion that if I didn't have a budget that I already blew <laughs> multiple times, um, I probably would have bought like, oh man, that Astro Boy jacket was something else. <sighs> Do you have the card from them? What was that? They didn't have a card. No. I looked. I looked because I was like, I <laughs> no. want this. I they want had, this every day. They also had a Van Gogh jacket and that is like my favorite artist of all time and i loved it so much did you notice like it had the the tracking of the sun of the star uh -huh. of like its placement every Ooh. few years yeah oh my gosh oh, it was so cool so good so good um, i also gotta say so i think there was thirty thousand registrants yeah. at this con yeah that like when i heard that my jaw dropped and um i have like never seen so many cosplays in one place mm -hmm. there was so many cosplayers 
And they were all amazing. Like every single cosplay I saw, I just was like, that is so cool. That is so funny. Like today we saw um, someone dressed as Pride Rock. Oh my God, from yes. This, from like Lion King. The Rock from the Lion King. The Rock King. from Lion King. They had a little plush lion <laughs> on there. Like, on top of the rock, they had a pride flag. It was so cute. It was, it was wonderful. The best, and then they had a hole cut out in Pride Rock for their face to come mm-hmm. through. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, like a bunch of people were doing, is it Fuji's? Fugies, the the out the Squirtle outfit that I was wearing. Oh, uh, Kigus. Kigus. Oh, Kigurumi. I was way off on that. <laughs> uh, Kigurumi's, um, and just like every chance that I got to see like another Pokemon, uh, I was like, hey, can we get a, can we get a photo? And that's why like. On the Discord and the Facebook, Mercedes posted a picture of of our chat dialogue. Um, I, I sent I sent the picture to to Mercedes of me, uh, Charmander, and Pikachu, and I was like, "Best squad starters." <laughs> yeah, excellent. excellent. Uh, I was missing Bulbasaur. Yeah. <laughs> no, what? Bulba who? <laughs> Speaking of Bulbasaur. The voice actress of Bulbasaur was also at the con and gave a delightful Pokemon panel. It was very sweet because she seemed like she maybe didn't know that much about Pokemon, but was so excited to like be in a room full of fans. Yeah. And it was just, and a 12 year old won the trivia contest, which we're all just, just like. Schooled y'all. Yeah. It was such hard questions too. Yeah. It was, it was a blast. Although Livy so did fun. get one right. Mm. I did. I, I got a, a, a deep cut one right, but. Yeah. That was a lot Excellent. of fun. Excellent. <laughs> Oh, I'm trying to think. That it just feels like there's been so much this weekend. Right. It's been so nice to like see familiar faces and friends. Um, Livy is someone coming to like a large out of state convention for the first time, like and doing cosplay at a convention for the first time. What was that experience like? Honestly, like when I was uh, so I cosplayed as Noctis from Final Fantasy 15. And then San Long from Heaven Official's Blessing, and then just like a very casual play, uh, Kakiyoin from uh, Stardust Crusaders. Uh-huh. Jojo's. And, yeah, Jojo. And um, honestly, when I first put on Noctis, I was like pretty nervous. And then when I like, I just got into this crowd, like this sea of people all in cosplay, I just was like, wow, I feel like I really belong here. And I like, I'm actually feeling this kind of sense of euphoria at like, dressing up as this really cool character that I love. And then as soon as people were like, oh, I love your Noctis. And I even met the the voice actor of Noctis, Ray. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you make a great Noctis. And then commented on uh, David's Harley Quinn cosplay. <laughs> and he was like, wow, you really are all, like, you're, really, you're really naked. <laughs> that was very amusing. Yeah. But that was like, that was such a special experience. And um yeah, so going into this con being like, and I made my first cosplay, which was Son Long, and that was a really fun project, a great learning experience. But, you know, I was I was just like not totally sure how invested I was going to get into cosplay um, until I had this experience of like dressing up in cosplay and seeing how it went. And it was such a positive experience, and I just saw so much stuff that was inspiring, and I just felt these things I had never felt before. You know, it's just like this <laughs> euphoria of, um, I don't know, being in this crowd of my people and um, just feeling like I really belonged. It was a really awesome experience and I'm already like planning the next cosplay. It was very cool. Yeah. So how, I'm not going to ask what the cosplay is, mm. but how are you going to help keep that motivation mm. towards this, this future project of yours? Yeah. Do you have like mile markers? Do you have a group of people that you might be able to rely on? Oh, what, what's your plan? Definitely. I mean, um, so I see a lot of Panon. And I know Pan is basically the greatest teacher out there. So <laughs> probably one of the best cosplayers out there. Yeah, absolutely. So that's that that is very helpful in terms of being able to cosplay whatever I want. Um, but also, oh, <laughs> also like just uh, I actually bought something at the like vendors hall today that's going to be a part of my next cosplay. And like as I was looking at this purchase, I could make. I was like, this is this is the defining moment. If I buy this, yeah. it's like it's already a commitment that I'm going to start the next cosplay. And I did it, and I felt really good about it. And on reflection, I'm really glad I made that purchase. And, like, honestly, um, I, you know, it's the end of a con. I feel pretty tired, but I'm already, like, planning and excited about working on my next cosplay, like, this weekend, next weekend, like, as soon as possible, because I am super hyped up about it. Um, yeah, I think that, uh, I think that working a little bit each weekend, like I did for Son Long, um, was a great way of not feeling like really stressed about it. I felt mm-hmm. a little stressed like the night before the con. Cause I was like, wait, 
what if my boots look dumb or whatever? And yeah. then everyone was like, Livy, your boots look fine. <laughs> I was like, oh, they do look fine, I guess. Um, but yeah, just like having, have, just having like a little bit of routine time in my, in my life to just be like, yeah, it's going to be some, some sewing time with Pannon. Um, sounds like a really great plan. Sounds like a really nice thing in my life. And I can definitely kind of see that trajectory of beginning and finishing a project that way. So. I love it. Yeah. I'm very privileged that way, though. <laughs> Not everyone has um, someone like that they can rely on to... Aww. Um, yeah. Pocket Aww. <laughs> Best Pokemon. <laughs> well, if you want to reach out to a Pocket Pan, and where can uh, they find us? Of course, at cosplaystitchandseam at gmail.com, or... You can go to the website, uh, Cosplay... This is not my normal... You can go to the website cosplaystitchandseam.com and fill out the Google form there. Um, or you can go to the Facebook, Facebook page. page. That's it. That's, that's my guy. That's what I got. Um, and you can reach out to us, talk to us, talk to our whole community because everybody wants to see you ex- uh, excel at what you're doing. Mm-hmm. If, um, and if you ha- if you were at SoccerCon and you have a story, we would love to hear it. You can reach out and tell us your stories, your horror stories even. I'm um, so excited oh. to get a horror story from Livy after this <laughs> yeah, one. I can't wait. We got a good one. I can't wait. Oh. Um, we want to, we want to know what you're working on next. What cons are you planning on attending? We have been, uh, just really excited to see lots of social media, uh, mm-hmm. and people posting on our discord, um, mm-hmm. of where they can, um, where they're planning on going next or their next project. Um, so make sure you're doing that. Make sure that you, uh, follow us on our social media as well as, uh, if you have the time. Coffee, KOFI, Cosplay Stitch, or Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Cosplay Stitch. Um, future David, can you put in the names of the people that are supporting us right now? Thank you, Past David. That list of fantastic patrons are Rose Does, Libby Cheney, Yggdrasil, Dr. Steggy, PB and James, Cynics, At Queer Eye Sci Fi, Hot Riku, Renamira, Jazzy Kofed, Jaguar Quinn, Gloria Shu, Sudi, Shock H, and Silver Deeds. Back to you, past David. Thank you, future David. You're so kind. <laughs> oh, we also have a TikTok now. Oh, we have a TikTok? There, is no, there are no videos uh-huh. just yet, but it will be the same as everything. It's Stitch and Seam on the TikToks. Perfect. All one word. Um, so, with all of that, um, do we have a pun? Oh, oh I've heard so many wait, this wait. weekend. We have a pun. Oh, it was it was Livy's favorite booth at the vendor hall. Oh my god! That was, that was the absolute highlight of the entire weekend. So um, I, it is not an exaggeration to call it a shrine. And in fact, the the vendor of this this fine establishment even took my picture with said shrine because I was probably the most excited individual. Across the whole weekend. Kneeling before it and praying. Yeah, I literally was kneeling at it and getting my picture taken. Um, So, SakuraCon, right? This was a shrine dedicated to... And I I do have to say it is Easter, so it just seems perfectly appropriate to be talking about my personal patron and saint, Shrek. Um, It was SakuraCon, the shrine. (laughs) Just filled... There was not one, but two screens playing two Shrek movies, and might I just say it was Shrek 1 and 3. A questionable decision, <laughs> but I enjoyed it all the same. It was gorgeous. Shrek Curricon 2023! <laughs> Goodbye, everybody! Oh, <laughs>